Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Kane Burgess, accompanied by a high security team, rushing to the hospital to visit his ailing mother. Upon reaching her bedside, he discovers she has passed away just moments before his arrival. Faced with the sudden loss, Kane conceals his grief, having learned to suppress emotions during his time in prison. In a surprising turn, he overwhelms the guards in the elevator, swiftly incapacitating them, before making a daring escape through the hospital's back door. Next, Kane finds himself attempting to gain entry into a private bar, only to be blocked by bouncers. Undeterred, he engages in a series of intense fistfights, easily overpowering the bouncers to gain access. Inside, he strikes up a conversation with Bez, a talkative yet cheeky bartender, presenting himself as a member, and requesting a tall glass of beer. While enjoying his drink, Kane discreetly listens in on a conversation across the bar, where a group of gang members discusses recent events. They recount the murder of a member named Rook, and the disappearance of their accountant, causing a slowdown in their activities. As one member, Toon, recounts, he describes a confrontation in their usual hangout, where Rook, unafraid, approached a mysterious figure lurking in the darkness. However, the encounter turned violent as Rook attempted to strike the stranger, only to have his hand gruesomely severed by an axe. Toon claims he chased off the assailant, but Kane bursts into laughter, accusing Toon of cowardice, claiming he was the one who fled. Enraged by the taunts, Toon and the gang confront him, ready for a fight. But when Kane reveals his true identity as a notorious killer, the gang recoils in fear. Bez, the bartender panics, and demands Kane leave immediately. As the bouncers, now awakened, attempt to confront Kane, he swiftly takes control of the situation. In a matter of seconds, he overpowers them, brandishing a double-barreled shotgun to emphasize the danger. He nearly takes the entire gang hostage, demanding to know the whereabouts of their boss, Lincoln, a corrupt loan shark and businessman, ironically also Kane's brother. Instead, they present Hyde, Lincoln's trusted assistant, who vividly recalls Kane from their past. Hyde introduces Kane as the boss's estranged brother, highlighting his mistake that landed him in prison. Unafraid, Hyde mocks his facial scars and the hardships he faced behind bars. Amidst the tension, one of the bouncers makes a desperate attack, only to be shot in the kneecap by Kane. Writhing in agony, the bouncer screams, prompting Kane to knock him unconscious with a swift kick to the face. Despite the violence, Hyde remains unconvinced that Kane is Rook's killer, referencing Toon's earlier remarks. Kane resolves the doubt revealing Rook's severed hand in a plastic bag. Now faced with the undeniable proof of Kane's ruthlessness, the gang has no choice but to comply with his demands. After berating Hyde and Lincoln for his imprisonment, Kane orders Hyde to call his brother, and bring him to the scene. With the gang under his command, Kane, unbothered by revelation of his dark past, begins to narrate the events, that shaped him into the cold-blooded killer they now face. Years ago, in his past life as a struggling boxer, Kane approaches his brother, Lincoln, for financial help to kickstart a business. However, Lincoln, engaged in a card game with Rook and Stokes, ridicules Kane's request, insulting him for his inability to even win a boxing match. In line with Rook's disdain, Lincoln hesitates to lend Kane money due to his troubled history. Just as Kane prepares to storm out in frustration, Lincoln stops him with an offer, he will provide the funds if Kane completes a job, without disclosing the details. Left with little choice, Kane reluctantly agrees, unaware of the dark path ahead. Arriving at Hyde's office, Kane receives the instructions for the task, he is to steal a plastic bag from a seemingly random woman, and return it to the office. Oblivious to the potential consequences, he carries out the robbery. To his surprise, the woman vehemently pursues him, as if her life depends on the bag's contents. The chase escalates, until tragedy strikes, the woman is struck by a car. Days later, Kane finds himself face to face with O'Hara, an elite detective, who has long monitored his brother's activities. In this meeting, he learns the grim truth about Lincoln's dirty loan business. Funds borrowed are swiftly embezzled, plunging borrowers into spiraling debt, that results in the seizure of their possessions, including homes and vehicles. Despite O'Hara's urging to expose Lincoln's crimes, Kane stands firm, refusing to betray his brother. Now entangled in robbery manslaughter and organized crime, Kane's loyalty to Lincoln outweighs the risks. The faint hope that Lincoln might help him keeps Kane from giving up. Introduced to Sergeant Evans, a menacing interrogator, known for extracting confessions through brutal means, Kane faces a vicious beating. Bound and defenseless, he withstands Evans' onslaught, until he is knocked unconscious. This lands him in Belmarsh, a notorious prison known as the Meat Grinder, where violence and filth rule. On his first day, Kane is attacked without provocation, 
sparking a brutal brawl with fellow inmates. Despite his efforts to defend himself, he is outnumbered and brutally beaten, resulting in the shattering of his front teeth. As a result, he receives metal dentures, that lend him a fearsome appearance, one that he surprisingly embraces. During a visit from his still-living mother, Mrs. Burgess, Kane learns a painful truth, Lincoln blames him for his imprisonment, and refuses to take any action to help. Betrayed and abandoned by the very brother he protected, he questions the loyalty that led him here. Nevertheless, he maintains his resolve, asking his mother to ensure Lincoln calls him. Despite the betrayal and hardships, Kane's spirit remains unbroken, as he navigates the treacherous world of Belmarsh Prison, determined to survive and seek his own form of justice. Days turn into weeks, with no word from Lincoln, no meetings, calls, or letters. Kane is left to fend for himself in the harsh confines of the prison. He faces frequent attacks from fellow inmates, their motives unknown to him. Yet, he has no choice but to defend himself, prompting him to embark on a grueling physical and mental training regimen, to prepare for the onslaught. During a routine day in the prison yard, Kane finds himself in a confrontation with two other prisoners. Thanks to his rigorous training, he easily dispatches them with a few well-placed punches. However, his triumph is short-lived, as one of the beaten inmates delivers shocking news, his brother had placed a 20,000 bounty on Kane's head. This revelation explains the relentless attacks he endures day and night. Filled with rage and fueled by a newfound desire for vengeance, Kane resolves to survive, and seek retribution against those who orchestrated his downfall. The lure of the prize money attracts more and more prisoners, turning his struggle for survival into a relentless battle for his life and freedom. As his influence and authority grows with the increasing number of his followers, each conflict within the prison results in injuries, with punishments of solitary confinement lasting months. The prisoners, driven to end Kane's reign, utilize every resource, even crafting a makeshift version of the incendiary chemical napalm, leading to a disfiguring injury on Kane's face. Over time, Kane transforms into a ruthless being, unrecognizable to himself, fixated solely on survival. His actions show no mercy, not even towards the vulnerable prison guards, many suffer severe harm. After three years of imprisonment, Kane receives a visit from his mother, delivering devastating news of her pancreatic cancer. Stricken by this revelation, Kane finds himself unable to confide in her about the atrocities committed by Lincoln, now her sole confidant. As Mrs. Burgess's health declines, Detective O'Hara visits Kane in the hospital, during one of his regular confrontations. It is revealed that Sergeant Evans, the officer who had cruelly tortured Kane, is working as Lincoln's informant. Detective O'Hara, upon learning this, swiftly removes Evans from duty, and informs Kane of Lincoln's intentions to have him killed. Faced with the impending threat, Kane finally agrees to cooperate with the detective, in exchange for a final meeting with his dying mother. Seizing an opportunity during his hospital stay, Kane orchestrates an escape, echoing the beginning of the movie. Back to the present, tensions rise within the gang, as two members urgently request to use the restroom. Kane, in his characteristic manner, refuses and commands them, asserting his dominance. However, one member, weary of Kane's stories, bravely challenges him to do as he pleases. Sensing the gravity of the moment, Kane forces him to his knees, warning that these may be his final words. As Lincoln arrives with his three men, he is taken aback to find his brother Kane, who has become increasingly hostile towards him. He swiftly disarms Lincoln and his men, before sending them to face the rest of the gang. On the brink of retaliation, Kane demands a convincing explanation for why he was marked for death. After a tense standoff, Lincoln finally reveals the truth behind the failed blood brother bond, they had discovered Kane was planning to betray them. However, Kane, aware of Sergeant Evans' involvement, informs Lincoln that the information was false, highlighting Lincoln's misguided trust in the corrupt officer. Kane recounts how he encountered Evans at his new workplace, engaging in a deadly struggle, that ended with a fatal blow from a hammer. Impressed by his intellect and strategic prowess, Lincoln offers him a chance at a new life, and a fresh start. Yet he remains unmoved, choosing instead to deliver a brutal fatal shot to Hyde, leaving witnesses shaken by the sudden painful death. Reeling from the loss of his trusted assistant, Lincoln faces another blow, when Kane reveals the shocking truth, only 1,500 remain in his account. It becomes clear Kane had not only visited Evans' workplace, but had also confronted Stokes, the next target on his list. During the confrontation with Stokes, who tried to intimidate Kane with a shotgun, Kane dismissed it with ease, disarming Stokes effortlessly. In exchange for his life, Stokes agreed to fulfill any of Kane's demands. Kane decided to donate the entire 2.2 million in Stokes' account, to the families affected by Lincoln's loan business. Left with nothing but his gang, 
Lincoln is convinced that Kane's fate is sealed, as there are only two bullets remaining in Kane's possession, with ten men to face. However, Kane declares he only needs one bullet, reserved for Lincoln. As Lincoln notices Bez preparing to attack Kane from behind, he continues his taunting, distracting Kane, while Bez strikes him with a bottle, igniting a vicious brawl. Despite being outnumbered, Kane swiftly dispatches one of the gangsters with a shot to the chest. Yet, he is soon overwhelmed and disarmed by the others. Unfazed, the gangsters resort to hurling glasses and bottles at him, until Bez provides them with a bag of weapons. However, even these prove futile against Kane's formidable combat skills and resilience. Toon, initially terrified, returns with a submachine gun, but fails to land a single shot on Kane. After accidentally killing one of his own gang members, Kane seizes the gun and proceeds to eliminate more adversaries. Despite relentless attacks with kicks, punches and knives, he systematically dispatches each opponent in a brutal fashion. As only Bez Lincoln and Kane remain, Lincoln aims a shotgun at Kane, revealing his disregard for Kane's intentions, and admitting he targeted him to protect his reputation among his partners. However, when Lincoln attempts to shoot Kane, he discovers the gun is empty, realizing Kane's earlier deception. Enraged, he lunges at Kane with a knife, initiating a fierce struggle. Ultimately, Kane prevails, fatally stabbing Lincoln, unwilling to harm a woman, even one who sought his demise. Leaving behind the remains of those who served Lincoln, Kane has partially rectified his brother's wrongs. The retaliation not only satisfies Kane, but also brings justice and recognition to Detective O'Hara. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.